Now let us look at the question. The physical process involved in the release of molecular oxygen from leaves is the options are diffusion, transpiration, osmosis and active transport. The process involved in a release of oxygen from the leaves is diffusion. Okay, so this is a physical process that is uh, involved in the release of molecular oxygen. Diffusion can be defined as the movement of molecules or ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Okay, so exchange of gases happens between the plants and the environment by diffusion. You know that plants take in carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis, end product of photosynthesis is oxygen and it is released outside into the atmosphere. Now carbon dioxide and oxygen get into and out of the plant by the help of stomata which are present in young stems and on leaves and the process involved in this uh, gaseous transport between the plant and the atmosphere is diffusion. Okay, so like I mentioned, it is the movement of molecules or ions from a region of their higher concentration to their lower concentration. So this is the correct answer to this question. The other options that we had were transpiration. Transpiration was one of the options. Now what do we mean by transpiration? Transpiration is a process in which water is lost from the plant. Okay, so this water loss happens in the form of water vapor in its gaseous form. Water is lost in its gaseous form. So water is lost in the form of water vapor through the aerial parts of the plant, especially the stomata. Okay, so this is known as transpiration. Loss of water in the form of vapor from the aerial parts of the plant, usually the stomata is known as transpiration. One other option that was there in this question is osmosis. Now what do we mean by osmosis? Osmosis refers to the movement of water. Okay, so here water moves from a region of its higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration across a semi permeable membrane. Okay, so here the movement is of water. Where is it moving from? From a region of its higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration across a membrane. What kind of membrane? A semi permeable membrane. Okay, so here's an illustration to represent the movement of water in osmosis. You can see how to the left there is more number of these circles representing water molecules and towards the uh, right the number is fewer. So here water molecules are more in number to the left. So they are moving from where their concentration is high to a region where their concentration is low and what's important here is the presence of this semi permeable membrane. So movement happens across the semi-permeable membrane along the concentration gradient. Okay, so that is what osmosis is all about. Next, the last option that we had was active transport. Now active transport also is a type of short distance transport. In active transport, movement of molecules takes place against the concentration gradient. Now what do I mean by that? Against the concentration gradient means it moves from a region where the concentration is low to a region where the concentration is already high. Okay, so it is happening against the concentration gradient and this type of transport is known as uphill transport. Since this transport is happening against the concentration gradient, this requires energy input and energy is utilized in the form of ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So this ATP hydrolyzes and uh, after the hydrolysis of ATP, energy is released and that energy is used uh, to transport substances against the concentration gradient. Okay, so here you can see how this is happening across a membrane. What you're seeing here in pink is a protein that is present within this membrane here. Now this protein, as you see, is transporting substances from this side to this side, right? Here you can see the concentration of the molecule that is getting transported is less and here it is more. So movement is happening from where it is less to where it is more against the concentration gradient. Alright, so let's go back to the question. Here the question was what is the process involved in release of molecular oxygen? We know that the correct answer to this question is diffusion which is option A. Now this is a somewhat easy question. 
uphill transport involves the movement of molecules options are along the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient without the help of transport proteins without expenditure of energy now we have to find out which is relevant to uphill transport okay so what do we mean by uphill transport uphill transport involves movement of molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration okay as you can see in this diagram it is movement of molecules that takes place from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration this type of movement is known as uphill movement and the transport is known as active transport because here as you can see transport of molecules is happening against the concentration gradient now since transport is happening against the concentration gradient this type of transport will require supply of energy and energy is supplied in the form of a molecule known as atp as you can see here atp stands for adenosine triphosphate when atp hydrolyzes to produce adp and inorganic phosphate some amount of energy is liberated now that energy is made use uh, to transport molecules or ions from a region of their lower concentration to a region of the higher concentration okay so here movement is from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration now in this type of uphill transport or active transport i told you atp is required right and there are proteins present in the membrane that will bring about this type of transport for example here you can see this is a sodium potassium pump one example for a transport protein used in active transport you can see how right now atp binds to it it is transporting three sodium ions outside for every two potassium ions inside okay you can see that potassium ions are being transported into the cell now there is binding of three sodium ions from inside the cell atp hydrolysis takes place and sodium ions are transported outside so this is what the sodium potassium pump does this is a transmembrane protein it makes use of atp to pump molecules against the concentration gradient now let's go back to the question and examine the options all right so here we were required to find out which of the four options were was relevant to uphill transport first option it happens along the concentration gradient this is incorrect because it happens against the concentration gradient from a region of its low concentration to a region of its higher concentration option b is correct because it happens against the concentration gradient option c it happens without the help of transport proteins it's incorrect i just gave you the example of sodium potassium pump where we saw by making use of one atp three sodium ions are pumped outside the cell and two potassium ions are taken into the cell okay so it most certainly requires transport proteins option d it happens without the expenditure of energy now this also is incorrect because i told you how atp is required for this process as it happens against the concentration gradient now the correct answer to this question is option b uphill transport happens against the concentration gradient here's the question the water available to the plants is options are eckard hollard cressard and option d both cressard and eckard let me first tell you what these different terms represent okay so we know that most terrestrial plants they get their water from the soil right they have elaborate root systems which will help in absorption of water from the soil now there is water present in the soil right the total amount of water that you can find in the soil is known as hollard hollard is the term used to represent the total amount of water that is present in the soil now all of the water that is present in the soil may not be available to plants i'll give you an example what happens sometimes is that after it rains the water goes down into the different layers of the soil some water will trickle down between the spaces present between the soil particles and it will go very deep into the soil such that it will not be available available to plants now this happens because of the gravitational force right therefore it is known as gravity water or gravitational water 
it goes down to very deep layers of the soil so that it is not available to plants most plants will not be able to produce roots that penetrate to that depth of the soil so though that water is present in the soil it will not be available to plants so this is an example of a type or a form of water which is present in the soil but not available to plants now all the total amount of water which is not available to plants but present in the soil is represented by the term eckhart okay so there is water in the soil the total amount is, of it is known as holart in uh, of holart some amount of water will not be available to plants that is known as eckhart and the amount of water which is available to plants is known as cressart example for cressart is capillary water now between the soil particles there will be spaces in tiny spaces between the soil particles water can be retained against the force of gravity now this type of water is known as capillary water so this is a form of water which is present in the soil and which can be made use by plants okay so that is represented as cressart in fact uh, about the about 75% of water that plants get from the soil is in this form okay it is in the form of capillary water now the question was uh what is the term that is used for water which is available to plants we have already arrived at the answer it is cressart right so holart is the total amount of water present in the soil cressart the amount of water available to the plants example capillary water eckhart the water that is not available to plants present in the soil now we know that cressart plus eckhart should be equal to holart so let's go back to the question now the water that is available to the plants is known as cressart which is option c here's the question membrane proteins are responsible for the options are passive transport active transport transport of water all of these let's examine everything starting with the first option so first option was passive transport right first of all what are membrane proteins they are proteins that are present within the plasma membrane and these membrane proteins that are involved in transport they are transmembrane proteins and help in the transport of molecules from one side of the membrane to the other side now in active and passive transport both types there is involvement of transport proteins here's an example of passive transport where transport proteins are required okay there's a type of passive transport known as facilitated diffusion here movement of molecules take place from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration along the concentration gradient with the help of proteins okay you can see here molecules are being transported from one side of the membrane to the other side right so these can be of two types they can be channel proteins or carrier proteins channel proteins they form a pore in the membrane through which the molecules are transported whereas carrier proteins they do not form any pores they are transmembrane proteins as well but they bind to the molecule uh, on one side the molecule that needs to be transported after the binding there is conformational change in this proteins this conformational change will result in the transport of the molecule from one side of the membrane to the other side okay so that is about a type of passive transport which involves membrane proteins now let's look at active transport active transport is the movement of substances or molecules from a region of its low concentration to a region of its high concentration against the concentration gradient by making use of energy in the form of atp here's an example this type of transport will require proteins membrane proteins and they are known as pumps okay because they pump molecules against the concentration gradient here in this animation you can see the example of a pro uh, a pump known as sodium potassium pump it makes use of one atp to transport three sodium ions outside the cell and take in two potassium ions from outside to inside okay so here again in active transport as well membrane proteins are required talking about movement or transport of water now transport of water across the membrane happens with the help of proteins that are known as aquaporins aquaporins are also a type of channel proteins that i mentioned to you about 
in facilitated diffusion now aquaporins as the name suggests they form pores in the membrane to transport water which is aqua okay so again in transport of water there is involvement of membrane proteins that are known as aquaporins so let's look at the question now membrane proteins are responsible for active transport passive transport as well as transport of water so the correct answer to this question is option d all of these now let us look at the question which of the following is an example of imbibition options are swelling of wood during rainy season shrinkage of pr protoplasm of cells when placed in hypertonic solution sodium potassium pump and option d exchange of gases through stomata now what is imbibition imbibition refers to the adsorption it is a surface phenomenon adsorption of water by hydrophilic substances is known as imbibition now wood swells because wood adsorbs water the reason wood adsorbs water is because wood is a hydrophilic substance now one uh, feature about imbibition is that after it adsorbs water it increases in volume as a result when wood which is a hydrophilic substance adsorbs water it increases in volume and it swells up okay so here you can see post imbibition this region of the wood which has adsorbed water would have swollen so the correct example for imbibition would be the swelling of wood after adsorbing water okay the other options that we had was shrinkage of protoplasm now shrinkage of protoplasm can happen because of uh, you know plasmolysis i'll tell you what exactly happens here now when you take a cell when you take a plant cell and place it in a solution where the concentration of solutes in that solution is greater than the concentration of solutes in the cytoplasm then due to the difference in concentration water will move from inside the cell to the surrounding solution now this solution which is surrounding the cell which has a greater concentration than the cell is known as a hypertonic solution okay so when this happens when water from the cell moves outside into the surrounding solution the process is known as exosmosis exosmosis because exo means outside water from inside the cell is moving outside by a process known as osmosis so it is known as exosmosis when water from the cytoplasm is lost then the protoplasm will shrink away from the cell wall so this shrinkage of protoplasm that happens when you place a cell in a hypertonic solution is known as plasmolysis or it can also be pronounced as plasmolysis okay so here you can see how uh the protoplast has shrunk okay so it has moved away from the cell wall over here i will use a different color so here you can see it has moved away from the cell wall because of the movement of water from the cell to the surrounding solution okay so this is plasmolysis and uh, sodium potassium pump now this is an example for active transport this transports three sodium ions from inside the cell to the outside and two potassium ions from outside the cell to the inside by making use of atp by making use of energy so sodium potassium pump transports sodium and potassium in opposite directions against their concentration gradient by making use of energy in the form of atp as you can see very clearly in this animation now the other option was exchange of gases through stomata we know that plants take in carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis and the end product of photosynthesis is oxygen that is released outside through pores that are found on the surface of plants like uh, stomata or lenticels now this exchange of gases happens between the atmosphere and the plant by a process known as diffusion so exchange of gases uh through stomata happens through diffusion okay so that is not an example for imbibition so the correct answer to this question is a very good example for imbibition would be swelling of wood due to rainy season and the reason is wood is hydrophilic and it adsorbs water increases in volume and swells up all right so the correct answer is option a